what is up guys today's video we will take a bit of a look at my games in the clash rally qualifier and yes i made it i made it in the top eight um from 1000 players so that basically means i secure 2500 dollars and i have a chance next week qualifies against the top eight like next top seven players besides me to win twenty thousand dollar i will really try my best here we're gonna go over some replays i really tired code it's to uh, 3 a.m for me but i played the full day i grinded the full weekend yesterday i played like nine hours the qualifier to get to the top 32 and today in a group with mohammed like Wiki jones and ali i was able to get number one and qualify for the monthly final to this next channel next next channel next week on the clash shot esports channel to make sure to check it out if you guys want to watch me play and today we talk a bit about it because i asked you guys in the community tab so make sure to subscribe to the channel um put a notification bell on because on the in the community tab i'm sometimes asking questions about video ideas about like some uh, different stuff going on in my life so make sure to put a notification there because you get always a notification so we've been talking about a dual strategy why i did this and why i decided to play the stacks because you guys really requested that you guys said yeah martin it would be cool to talk a bit about the games why did you decide to do this how did you feel there and about the matchup situation in general so if you guys don't understand duel or the format in general i had like a four player one robin with kick slide you guys know him you won the qualify you won the the whole thing last time um with Ryke jones was a really great player was like <laughs> still a great player if he get got there um he was with the world finals um, with ponos last year and um, we also competed against them with sk gaming and i played against ali maybe not the player which most people know but he also a great player and i only lost against him in the round robin so it's best of three dual format that basically means we play a best of three and you can just use um, every card once in your deck so you can't repeat any card and that's like really strategic so if you guys know your opponent doesn't have like the lock of a bear ball or delivery anymore it's like really good to use like a spell bait deck so i'm gonna talk a bit about that today i'm gonna show you some replays here i have some replays here um prepared so this is like the last time i decide to play i play against kicks light like i played against everyone um twice so i played um six games against ali wiki jones kicks light and then the same again and i decided to play first time when i played against kicks light um which we're gonna show now the games so i played in the first game against um i think mortar mortar minor cycle i just fought the real soul deck i lost close against royal giant in the second game i decided to play this graveyard deck and why did i decide to play this graveyard deck it's a really it's like a really easy reason behind it because i knew um hunters out of sight and hunter is out of cycle hunters out of his decks in general he used hunter in the first game and he used zappies in the first game okay or did he use zappies no, and he didn't use zappies i think but he used hunter and electro that so basically two big troops um which means kind of okay he has like two troops which i'm like feeling like poison or fire would be good because normally you play poison or fireball in graveyard right but because i knew him two big um big troops out of his hand or like out of his deck choices anymore i knew he's most likely gonna play a uh, spam or bait deck because you know Mohamed light he's really really good for cycle decks he likes Warburg, he likes hawk and i knew he was up on zero so i'm i was like really sure he feels comfortable right now using decks like hawk or minor wall breaker so i was sure okay i am mostly gonna face something like that and normally in stack you have the hunter of the night which but i used the hunter or in the first game and even without using the hunter in the first game i would still would have put the night witch because i know um, I think in the first game he uses fireball already. I know Mohamed Light is not using poison and I know he likes EQ and I still <laughs> I know as well he doesn't he like he's not really having decks which are really good against Knight which he likes Hawk, Minor Wallbreaker, I'm Minor Wallbreaker player myself and I know especially with having Earthquake in your deck if I'm um, having fireball out of your kind of hand um, it's not really um nice to deal with the night witch so i decided to put a night witch in also so this is about like a strategic thing how i went into the second game of the best of three i hope i can i could explain it the best for you as i said if you guys are new to my channel i'm not i'm from germany so it's not all, always easy to speak english and especially um talking about strategy and stuff in english so i hope you guys still appreciate it and you understood what i want to say so kind of defensive game similar next time it's like you play a really defensive graveyard deck 
And in double and you okay. I for sure the matchup advantage here if I just play super good defense and like really flawless defense. Don't want to overextend here. But you guys, we see there's going to be one play in the game which is really, really important for us to do. So. Yeah, I'm really happy for sure that I went 5-1 and one at the end, um, really great games, I played I, every game for me, even if I won, win or loss, uh, lose, was like 2-1, <laughs> besides the last one against Mo, so like, I'm really happy that I beat the most likely current best player in the world 2-0 and 2-1, so yeah, really happy with my performance overall, but you guys will see right now the huge play, so I think we are going to look into that, and we go in. Pro player's mind. I want to teach you how to get better in Clash Royale. You guys are going to see now what I'm talking about. So he's using defensive EQ. Defensive EQ is like a play which not really a lot of you guys are doing. Or I feel like in general the Clash Royale community is not really taking it as serious as it is. Because sometimes in scenarios the defensive EQ is really good. Especially against tubes like um, Graveyard. Really, really good. I sometimes use it as well. It's like kind of surprisingly really good. It um, helps a lot. If you guys don't have a lock and cycle, just put an EQ down, put your knight, spear gobs, and it helps a lot. So, what is he gonna do? So, it's kind of obvious what he's gonna do. He's using his EQ and a knight on the right side, kind of safe as spear gobs. And if you go on with a bomb tower, uh, inferno tower, in this position, it basically means you're gonna go for the king tower activation. You can play the spear gobs before the king tower and go in with the king tower activation. The manga jumps and goes into the king. This is what the most of players are doing. If you play against MK Graveyard, if you play against any MK deck, it's really helping a lot. Um, and against Graveyard especially, <laughs> it means kindness the game is over. So I knew that. I knew he did have um, spear gobs in cycle and he didn't want to use them because he wanted to go in for the king tower activation. So this is going to be an important thing because I'm, I'm 0 and 1. He was 2, two 0 at this point. He won against Ali and um, Wiki Jones. I won against Ali and Wiki Jones in the first three games. Like, you know, it's not what I mean because, like, as I said, we play against twice against A1. We're both 2 0, so this is an important game because head to head is the first tiebreaker as well. So, if he wins against me, he has a better position. He's 3 and 0, I'm 2 and 1, and he's a tiebreaker against me. So, important game. He was up 1 0, and I have to do an important decision now. So, you guys are gonna see I have Snowball in hand, and this is really, really important. Even if you would have, even if you would have had bats and cycle on the right side, I wouldn't have used my arrows. So, sorry if I'm talking so much. I hope you guys don't. I'm um, not annoyed, but I really want to say what I'm doing here because I think it's important and yeah I'm not doing this videos as often as mm, I might would do as it sounds right but I do live gameplay most of the time but I think if I qualify for, for the big events play against the best players in the world I think it could help you guys to do this at least like once a month just going over replays and making you better in Clash Royale. I can tell you already, tomorrow is going to be in live uh, letter episode again. So, we're going here with the Magna. And you guys got, I know, as I said, he's going to go off the Spear Gobs. So, I need to go off the Predictive Arrows. And yes, it sounds like a great play, Martin. You predicted it. Yes, but it was uh, just the obvious play. And it didn't bring me really anything, right? I got a Fisher shot, but it was not a game. Winning play, it was a game saving play because otherwise, if the Mega would have jumped to the King Tower, I would have lost the game. So, I didn't win the game because of that. I just more saved my life. So, we can go um, um, just like a normal time speed again. And it's just about graveyarding Knight, which is great support of Unity. He's even if he's gonna deliver here and just about playing defense and just making sure we got skeleton hits all the time like one two skulls are enough so just make sure go with the night which night which is really great against the stack as i said great deck choice by me you can always say sometimes yeah the make the game is matchup dependent yes i know but all, sometimes it's also about playing and doing the right deck uh, choices so we're going in here and as i said he's going to use the defensive eq once again we're going to get some chip shots i think yes I think a bad connected for, for one or two chips as well. It's just about playing defensive now and doing what we like to do. So he's going with bats. I think he's just going to EQ here. Great EQ cycle. We're going to use a snowball here. And am I going to go on for. I think I'm going to here go on for Fisherman in the back. And I think I'm just going to make it graveyard soon. Like I'm going to E with first here. And I think now I'm, I'm just going to make it graveyard. I think. Honestly, it looks like a really dumb play, but this is what I'm gonna do here. Just naked graveyard. I'm gonna cage here. I'm gonna snowball the tower. Why I prefer to snowball the tower with, um, and not like arrows the tower? Because with snowball, the tower gets load also, and yeah, we're gonna get more skeleton heads, most likely. So we go with another fisherman here in the back. And we're going with an electro wizard, and we go with a cage. So great play overall. 
And he's gonna get some damage, so it's not e as easy as it looks because, yeah, you, know, you guys might know, Moment Light is one of the better Wallbreaker players in the world. So, we go for Snowball, Snowball's kind of favorite, we're going for that too, also. He is going with this. Yes, he's gonna get a Wallbreaker connection, but I don't really care. I'm going for EWC on the left side, we get also a ton of damage and just about now graveyarding. And Snowball the tower, we first gonna go off the cage to play defensive. And yeah, Snowball, arrows, GG's were played, good game, 1-1 one, one here. And that was great, that was insane, and now we're gonna jump into game number 3 against Mormon Light. So guys, unfortunately I couldn't sh I couldn't show you the game anymore because I forgot to share it because I did other games and the replay is no longer available. So I apologize for that guys, but although I can kind of explain you the game, the kind of the thoughts about the game. Um, he used the delivery in game 2, he used fireball lock in game 1, he used like delivery earthquake in game 2. And I know he likes hawk a lot. And I know he could still use hawk, he could use something else. He used RG by the way in the first game also, and he used minor cycle also so i thought okay what would he do? like what is a good surprise deck overall and he doesn't have lock and delivery and eq anymore and fireball like really good spells against lock bait and i know he's not really like a flying machine player or something and i still had fireball in my deck suggestion because in the first game i played eq plus delivery so i think okay he's most likely not gonna go in with something like recruits or with flying machine lava and so I was kind of kind of sure, like kind of confident to go on with the deck choice with Lock Bait, which is a really strong deck choice, um, or like a really risky deck choice, you could say. But I got a great matchup. It looks like a bad matchup because he has Poison, um, Barbarian Brawl, but Snowball. But he's not going to be able to break through. And I just Rocket Cycle him. This is how the game went. So. Another game I play against Kicks Light, like Mormon Light. The second game was Morton versus Mormon Light game about everything. If he wins, he still has a chance to qualify. It would have been a three-way tiebreaker with Ale, Light and me. But you guys gonna see, this is gonna be the first game. Yeah, that was the first game. Why I decided to play this deck in the first game, in the first scenario? Um, it's just about playing a deck which I feel I'm comfortable with and I know it's gonna get a good matchup like for 80%. So I decided to play this Warbreaker deck. I always, always checking the opponents what they play, uh, play before. So it was kind of easy for me to do in the first round. I had like a big list with decks, suggestions for myself. Like I don't have an analyst for that. I'm just it myself. So look what the opponent's playing. So honestly, in the first round against every free player, I got good matchup, I went 3 and 0. But in the second, I kind of struggled because I couldn't really prepare for like tries against everyone because they switched up things and I couldn't just repeat my plan like they're they're gonna know if you do it twice you can't really do it right so it was more about in the second round playing what i think is the best strategy and so i decided to play this deck against mo because i knew he likes hawk a lot and it looks like he really played hawk in the imp most important situation so if it's all about money if it's about qualifying he always used hawk so i decided to go in for a really good counter and this deck is risky, yes. Why is it so risky? You can, yeah, for sure, Expo, but most likely, um, most not playing Expo. Like, by the way, Mo, he's, even if he didn't qualify, he's still, for me right now, the best player. If it's about skill in Clash Royale, so, because he's just so good with Cycle decks. So, I decided to play this deck. It's not good against Lava and also, but Mo didn't really play a lot of Lava on, so, I knew if I play against Hawk, I would, like, <laughs> commit a hard counter, so I decided to go in with that. So, I hope you guys are gonna learn something out of my, um strategic tips today it's like a completely different video so if you guys not like addicted to esports getting better competitive it's for you as you if you're just a casual player you're not gonna really take out of that something or like something out of that but if you are um really into that esports scene or want to improve or want to know how esport player is like preparing anything i hope this video is gonna help you so this is like how i decide to stack obviously make a great team it's a really good deck with defensive cards and as i said i really think like he is not going to play a counter so this is like an easy matchup i guess really nothing you can do we just magic archer cycle him um and this is what i think it's not just about playing the decks at the best level it's always about preparing good and but the second deck is going to be an interesting one so like the third one because i won yeah you guys gonna see the sword already i will win this best of three to zero but i'm gonna show you already the deck which i would have played if i would have lost the second game because it would be a bit interesting because some people ask me yo martin which was like your third deck you prepared for more and i'm gonna show you that after this game is done um 
It's just an interesting deck. It's just an interesting deck I decided to pick here. So that's like the first game. You guys can see like always keeping in mind of the spells. Like the spells are the most important things because you can build around them. So use three spells. Log, Delivery, EQ. And you guys are gonna see in the second game, he used two spells again. So he used um, Barbarian Barrel and Snowball. So who most likely could have used a Lava deck in game three. That's what I think. Or he could have maybe used an Royal Giant with, or like maybe a, maybe Graveyard Arrows. Graveyard Arrows Fireball with Goblin Cage. But he doesn't have Cannon Cut also, so it's really tricky, right? So I would have played this deck in game number three. He used a ton of spells, he used like, Five spells and two games. It's like not normally what you what you're doing in um, duels. Normally you're like just playing two spells at a time. But like for sure in this deck in hockey Q makes sense. So I would have played this deck because it's really really good against like all this stuff. Skami gets hard corner by EQ. EQ was out of his hand. Spats was um, Snow was out of his hand. Goblin Ball, Lock, and Barbarian Ball was out of his hand. Hunter is just so solid in defense. RG has a win condition with the Goblin Ball. Giant Scare has a really great answer. And Dark going to pick up Graveyards. Even if he has arrows. What does he got arrows? Is he dead? Is he everything dead? Is he playing dead? Is he playing dead? And this is just a great bait deck which I played. I would have played in game number three. So we're gonna go to game number two. He's playing E, e Barbs and um, Bridge Spam. And I decided to play a really solid Graveyard. And um, yes, I had to build a bit around that because I can't use Bomb Tower. Why can't I use Bomb Tour? I use it in my minor wall breaker deck. And for me it's more like um more important to use uh, my decks or like my Bomb Tour in a minor wall breaker deck. It's more important than to use it in a graveyard deck. I also can't use Snipe because I used it already, so I used put in Valkyrie and I put in Cage in this graveyard deck. Because I think it's more important with the Bomb Tour with the Tornado in my wall breaker deck than in my graveyard deck. Graveyard you can build around put something else in and yeah if you would have played lava Hound, yes i would have been dead but i already knew yeah he's most likely not gonna play lava Hound beside and uh, because i he, i still have hunter open i still have fireball open right so you always need to think what are you thinking what is he what is he thinking um i don't know i still have fireball open i, I still have um, hunter open i like to that all the stuff so it wouldn't it would have been really risky for him to go in with the lava especially if he's like not really feeling comfortable or like lava is one of his better decks so this is what i feeling right now so you guys gonna see a really bad graveyard so i thought okay i'm up by elixir and he don't really he doesn't really have anything in the stack so but uh i was wrong i, I knew already it was like a bridge bam deck i thought it was like a mega knight bridge bam deck or like other bridge bam deck but i didn't expect the e-buffs I'm honest, I didn't expect the e-bubs at all. So, what I didn't expect also, that the one e is going back and I'm using like my archers and my archers don't do anything. So, um, I'm using my Mega Minion here. Mega Minion high, great Mega Minion, but you're just gonna see I'm gonna do a big mistake here. I'm also over committing with the Snowball. I just should have waited and used the Valkyrie against this Bandit because he knew I don't have anything in Alexa. Like no Alexa, no Alexa in cycle, like no Alexa in general. So he's gonna give us, uh, I'm gonna give him a well play because he played really well. And that was a great play overall from him. So, but I already knew, or like I still knew, I can win this game if I go into double. Because double and triple gravy, it's time. So I knew he doesn't have a big spell. I knew. He can't really break through besides he just has he just has the elite barbarians and i have a really good deck in defense so he normally shouldn't be able to break through i have a good matchup i just played bad because i played it way too early graveyard because i kind of risked everything on one card which was dumb so if i would have lost the game completely deserved my fault it's still a good matchup so it's like just a tip for graveyard in general if you like people ask me how to play graveyard play passive play passive don't uh graveyard too early Besides, you have a big elixir adventure. He's gonna snowball that, and you guys gonna see, I'm gonna get like two free graveyards on which are getting a ton of damage. So I don't really think this girl gets a ton of damage, but still, as long as you're getting like 200, 300, 400 damage, it's fine. It's fine, as long as your opponent doesn't get a big, huge counter push. And for sure, uh, for sure, <laughs> for sure, we still need to be careful in double, um, or like in, with his magic arch and cycle. So we need to be careful, okay. Uh, you, you, you please don't have magic on the side, right? This is what we need to do, which we need to take care. Um, I think I want to get a great fireball on him now. Maybe I could have timed the fireball a bit better, but we are fine here. I don't really think we're going to graveyard here because I expect him to play e-bobs. It's all about graveyard timing. So you want to cycle this deck. 
can, people that can uh, uh, underestimate the graveyard cycle here, so we're cycling back. Mm. And I think we're going in here with the cannon card. Yes, we were punishing here. Why we punish him here? I know he just has one mini tank or like a tank for the cannon card. It's the Elite Barbarian, it's out of cycle, so I'm going aggressive here. You know, guys gonna see with the Goblin Brawler, we're gonna get a ton of damage, we also got a Mega Minion shot, I think. And we're going for Firebolt here, and we're kinda even now. 400 damage, that's fine! 400 damage, um, I would even say with this 400 damage, we're feeling like an um, advantage lead, uh, with a damage lead, because it's going into Triple Elixir time, and this is gonna be our advantage in our game to win, because Triple Elixir time graveyard. That synergizes so well. So we go for cannon card, the bridge uh, in the back. Go for magic archer like that. I really played a bad cannon card, but I played a great mega man to catch up the magic archer. You guys gonna see two great mega man. So it was like the same position like against search in a one HP game. You remember? Yes, you do. So, but this time I played better. Things. So I overcommit a lot, you can do it with Graveyard, you can do it. He's gonna get two shots, but I have to take them. But I'm gonna go in here, here and he, I know already he tries to cycle back to another Magic Archer. So he's gonna do this, he's gonna do, go with the Royal Ghost, and I think now this is gonna be his last chance. I predict this Magic Archer here, and this is it. GG's were played. I won the game against Mohamed Light the second time. Um, it's not like about... I'm not showing the games because I don't disrespect him or saying I'm bad at him. I wouldn't even I wouldn't say I'm better than him. I would say right now, considering he's the best player in the world, if it's about skill-wise, for sure my matchup the matches were on my side. But this is how, like, how a professional player is prepared for the like a general scene, like how I prefer prepared against the best players in the world. I hope you guys had some insights. I hope the, uh, the video helped you a bit. Like how a day from a CL player looks, and not, not really a day, but like a play day, how I'm playing the decks, how I'm preparing the decks, and like how my strategy is. With the dual format, I think it's kind of interesting for you guys, so I hope you guys had some uh, fun. Please leave a like if you did so, because then I know, okay, you guys want to see it more often. If not, don't do it. Subscribe to the channel for more Clash Royale high-level competitive content, and I would say I'm going to see you guys tomorrow with an interesting video, and I love you guys. Thank you for all the messages and all the support. I'm tired. I'm going to go sleep. And I wish you a nice day.